I started my teaching career in the early 1990s, so I've kind of seen the whole evolution of how technology has been integrated into the classroom. I think in the beginning, in the mid-90s into the late 90s, computer technology was basically used as an expanded textbook. Teachers were using search engines rather than, than actual physical books. Um, I think there's a feeling in the profession um, to try to, fit, to think that we've taken that full cycle and that now then the question is what's next. I think the answer to the what's next question is that now we have to use telecommunications to really view computer technology as a collaboration tool, uh, a way to have students working with other students and outside experts to collaborate on projects. Collaboration means building bridges between people something they've achieved at Bergen County Technical Schools to a remarkable degree. And Carry Ethernet is the technology that's made it possible, while at the same time saving a great deal of money. Bergen County Technical School in New Jersey is one of the preeminent technical colleges in the US, so I asked the superintendent, Robert Sloyn, to tell us a bit about it. The Bergen County Technical School is, has approximately 2,000 full-time students at the high school level, 20,000 adult students. The 2,000 students at the high school level attend three campuses. There's a campus in Hackensack, a campus in Teterboro, and a campus in Paramus. The Hackensack and Teterboro campuses are magnet schools where we have the county's top achievers. The Paramus campus is made up of 315 special education students and all three campuses prepare students to have the option to either continue their education and go on to college or graduate from high school and go right to the job market. Uh, what we try to do is prepare the students for a lifetime of learning. The three campuses are several miles apart and serve pupils living in an area of 12 square miles. So what was wrong with the existing system? We used to have a line for telephones, a line for data, and a line for video, uh, dedicated lines. So each one of the three will be an expenditure and very expensive to run. Meanwhile, the move to IP convergence had begun and Bergen was quick to respond, first migrating their voice traffic to VoIP and then moving to video. Pioneering adoption of VoIP to integrate the voice and data networks into a single system presents a challenge. How to ensure voice quality of service over a network subject to heavy data traffic between sites? Verizon created the original ATM network, then something happened that led to a rethink of the underlying technology. After September 11, tragedy that woke up the need of, for creating a disaster recovery system. A system that allowed us to bring the data from the different campuses and mirror it somewhere else. Uh, to do all these things simultaneously, our lines were too slow. So we were looking for a, a, a new technology that would allow us to do all those things at once and be able to maintain the integrity of all our data, also being able to balance the load of the phone connections. Meanwhile, Verizon were pioneering another solution, one that promised faster speeds, maintaining data integrity as well as balancing data, voice and video services with appropriate quality of service. It really is the adoption of Carry Ethernet that's enabled Bergen County Technical School to answer the what next question because it's Carry Ethernet that's transformed their separate campus islands into one great local area, networked as tightly as a single site would have been in the past, and with all the cost and simplicity advantages of Ethernet. Verizon's Carry Ethernet has built a bridge between the three campuses, allowing not just voice but also video links. I asked Richard Panicucci to expand on what he meant by a computer technology as a collaboration tool. IP video conferencing has really introduced us to a series of web-based applications that really has changed the way we teach. Um, when I look at the web meeting applications that are available to teachers today, you're really talking about a classroom without walls. You're talking about the ability to bring any expert into your classroom. And having a class, it doesn't have to rely solely on the expertise of the teacher. 
Um, for example, uh, in this past spring, we had a physics teacher actually teach his class jointly with a physicist from Princeton's Plasma Physics Laboratory, where the students could actually see the experiments that are going on and apply it to what they're learning in class. So we see the bridge building goes even further than the linked campuses, bringing in expertise from outside sources, and they haven't stopped there. Now that we have the extra bandwidth, uh, we are exploring ideas and how to utilize other things, like uh, video on demand. So we're able to create a, a library resource of videos that can be accessed from any campus. So now we're saving money because not every campus has to purchase the videos. And it's easy to manage. We don't have to lend it to the students to take it home. Now, we also do live broadcasting. We can have multiple channels, and we can be broadcasting live multiple sections. That could be from professional development for our teachers, or from a guest speaker from somewhere else. Uh, we can do also video conferences, uh, multiple video conferences, up to 25 simultaneously, between campuses and with, uh, with anywhere people in the world. We communicate a lot with schools in Japan, schools in Israel, schools in Argentina, Mexico, uh, and those things can go through all the campuses at once. So how can create for us a great flexibility to do a lot of more things, but the most important is to be able to concentrate all the data in one location and be able to back it up properly in, into another area at the speed that we need. So that part was very important. That was the original idea. But these things have come extra and has a lot of value for education. Other important factor is the, the economical factor. With a, with a metro internet, allow me to manage all the sites from one central location. And that saved me money in humans, technical humans. And at the long run, allow us to do more things have been able to investigate new technologies and implement them. As Panicucci suggested, now the traffic is not just one way. Carrier Ethernet's ability to build bridges between people has resulted in a whole new relationship developing between the schools and their community pupils, parents and staff, thanks to Bergen County's household communicator system. The household communicator enhances communication between students, teachers and parents. It gives us the ability to look at what's being assigned to students for homework, and it gives the other teachers the ability. So, for example, if a math teacher assigns an hour of homework, before the history or English teacher assigns homework, they have the ability to look at the household communicator and see that that student already has assigned one hour of homework. As principal, charged with the responsibility for the health, safety, and welfare of over a 1,000 students, I find the school messenger component of Household Communicator an invaluable tool in providing immediate information to parents regarding campus events and the progress of their children. I have two sons in Bergen County Academies. I have a freshman in the Performing Arts Academy and a junior in the Science Academy. And I marvel at what I hear that them telling me about the technology. But um, they're teenagers, so I don't hear from them all the time. And that's what's so great about the household communicator, is it ensures that I stay in the pulse of what's happening at the school. Um, I can hear about exams or homework or get an update on emergency closings. It's fabulous. But carry Ethernet is a global phenomenon. Its reach is extending beyond the metropolitan area, beyond national boundaries, across the world. It's the bridge building technology par excellence for tomorrow's global citizens being educated at Bergen County Technical School today. One of their new programs is the Global Leadership Exchange. It enables Bergen students to communicate with other students all over the world. And Panicucci sees an importance that goes way beyond traditional ideas about education. I think that this technology has really given us an opportunity in, in the post-September 11th world to create what we call global learning communities. Um, this kind of technology enables students to work together with other students all over the world on a variety of projects. Our hope is that this will make it a lot more difficult for anybody to demonize certain groups, nationalities, and hopefully we'll all focus on what we have in common. Bergen County's network clearly has the potential to offer enormous benefits to staff, pupils, and parents. 
but the history of networking is littered with technologies that promise much and yet never quite delivered. So how well is the system performing in practice? We are very happy with the reliability of the system, uh, very content with the how easy is to manage it, and, and more important, the support that we get, we receive from Verizon. So the Metro Internet really surpassed my expectations. With the ability to provide students with an extensive learning experience, both academically and socially, will bring them into the global arena. And that's exactly what we're preparing them for. Thank you.